So g'day, and welcome back to sunny, beautiful country Victoria. So I am near Riddles Creek, and you should visit there. Every day I go past there, someone has geese, and they're just all over the place. There's like, like 40 of them. So what I'm looking at here is this Kirkman. Yeah. Another one. Yeah. So before my phone dies. We have the actual existing road and okay, going this way we have uh, the old road so the actual formations that you can see around me are all basalt and behind me is Emu Creek so it's a fairly minor creek so I'll turn you around and we can actually have a look at the actual formation this is very beautiful Okay, so it's a bit windy, and I don't have a microphone, I didn't bring one. Uh, so what we have here is we have basalt that's been eroded by the actual creek. And as to the age of this basalt, mm, I don't know. The Western Volcanics, which is all this, it goes all the way to Hamilton, even past Hamilton. It's about three, four hundred kilometers. And this is about eight to half a million years old. In this area, based on other formations I've looked at, uh, it's probably between uh, half a million and four million years old. So it's actually fairly extensively weathered by the actual uh, river. So here's the Emu Creek, and here's the old bridge access. Don't go down here, look at the electric fence. So I don't know why they'd actually cut off your access to this bridge. It looks like pretty stable obviously they allow people to get into it because uh, there's an entrance just can't drive on the actual bridge ah you can see why well the concrete is fairly weathered and eroded so this bridge is just slightly uh, breaking down but the bitumen looks pretty good so I can't actually see any of the geological formation in the creek. So there's a problem with Victoria. Well, it looks like you can. Down on the bottom, it's probably just basalt boulders, I'd say. So this bridge is probably 50 years old. Okay, yeah. I can see down there. You've got some basalt. It looks like some of the actual sedimentary rock down there and the sedimentary rock around here is a riddle formation so that is a sandstone you've got some black shales in it it's mainly shales and um siltstone uh, it can be thin or thin thick bedded depending on the uh, frequency of distribution just like here you have quiet time at this time period so any sediments coming down is pretty much being deposited. I don't really see much movement in that river at all. But when there's a flood, all of the sediment, only the coarser sediment would be deposited, so the large rocks and boulders. And the silt, the clays, will be taken further down river. But this doesn't deposit sediment. This river would just be eroding. So we've got some tree planted eucalyptus and we've got some uh, foreign uh, plants that you see there. But if we look on the hillside, we can only actually see the basalt if we go up to the side of the actual valley. Yeah, so this is a valley here. Not extensive, but quite nice. And all this was cleared at one time for grazing. I don't think many animals are dead eventually down here. It looks to be 
are dangerous. And you can see by the actual plants that this is not extensively grazed by um, animals even past the, um, the fence line. There's a lot of blueberries as well. So, this is falling apart. But, if we go over to the other side, there's no point going over there. There's, uh, you can't get access to the geological formation. So, I come here to actually find the little sandstone, obviously. I see going that way down the river, but it's private land. Uh, there are exposures of it. You have to go around the bend there. Uh, but here, no, which is a pity. But it's just good to see nature taking over what was formerly cleared. And looks like we have the Melbourne Airport close by. So, what can we learn from this experience? Basically, what you'd actually learn here is just the erosional process that happens in a stream exposure. So, here we have a curve in the, in the actual river. So this side is actually being deposited on this side of the river because the bend. So, the actual flow rate of the river is slower on this side. On the other side, it's a lot faster because, uh, you know, things go in a straight line until they hit an object and then they turn. So, or they're forced to turn like an aircraft, but the aircraft is in the air, so. So, the other side of the Emu Creek, that's all been extensively eroded and it's been eroded slowly. So, it has been eroded up the top and up the top would have soils. This clay turns into, uh, this basalt, should I say, turns into Montmorillonite clay. And it's also been undercut, eroded, weathered at the, where the actual river meets the shoreline. So that's the weakest point. So we've got it being eroded at the top in the soil when it rains or wind it's being dragged down into the river and also when this gets under cut it will collapse and depending on the undercutting it might be the whole hillside that actually collapses or it might be just parts of it i'd say most likely most times it's just small pieces uh, but like if there's a flash flood it could actually take the whole side away so that's why it's actually a cliff. Hmm, very interesting. So, basically that is what happened in there. And it looks actually quite nice. Pity you can't go and visit it. You probably have to go for a swim anyway. Thank you. And have an awesome time learning about geology.